Hi there! Today I'm putting together a unit study for math and I thought I'd take you along on the process. So first up I'm going to be using my Waldorf curriculum by live education. I'm going to show you the different grade levels for math here. This, six, this is sixth grade and it uh, is an introduction to algebra. And for fifth grade, um, we go through geometry in a very beautiful way. It's very artistic, and there isn't any math that you're doing, like any theorems or anything like that. It's just um, learning about different shapes. And fourth grade uh, is fractions, and again, it's taught in a very wonderful way with um, kind of imaginative, with like on a farm. And for third grade, um, we do a lot of a lot of length and measurement and weight and measuring time and calendars. And we did this unit last year for um, my third grader last year, and it was a really great unit. And for second grade, um, there's a lot with counting, addition, subtraction, and even a bit of an introduction to the times table. So I've, I've pulled these different grade levels, and I have a fourth grader and an eighth grader. And so I'm looking through them, trying to decide what areas we're going to cover. And so I browse through the table of contents, look at some of the topics that we want to cover, and I've decided that I'm going to do geometry for my eighth grader. And I'm going to do... Um, some addition and subtraction and columns and the times tables for my fourth grader. So we're not really sticking within the recommended grade levels. But it's okay, within any curriculum you can move around and you can meet your children's needs and that's one of the benefits of homeschooling. And so what I do is I begin by looking through my own bookcases and my own supplies in my schoolroom to figure out what I have and what I'll need. And I knew that I was going to do this unit about six months ago, and so I went online and I found a lot of wonderful picture books related to math. And so I ordered... Um, probably too many, but we ordered a lot of them, and they're all in my bookcase. Um, they're not quite organized, they're just all in a section where I keep my new curriculum. I also have a, a cupboard that I keep all of my thematic units, and so I have a bin that has a lot of math-related um, curriculum and um, games and books. So I'm going to pull that out and see if there's anything that I can use for this unit, which will be geometry and general math. I also love using games in our homeschool, whether it's a math game or any other kind of game, and so I'm going to go ahead and pull those as well. So on my table I have almost everything that's math related that I've pulled from my supplies um, in my schoolroom. So I'm going to show you what's inside this bin. I have these games called 24 Prime and they're a great card math game. So I have a few of those. And I also keep other um, card games and flashcards and little tiles for playing math bingo or other things in this bin as well. I also keep some reference books in here that are, are more for my um, information and then I can draw from it if I need extra information for a unit. Um, I also have some books that can be worked on uh, daily or weekly throughout the year without having it be um, in a math unit. So some of these books are great just to keep some of those math facts fluid throughout the year. And this book is great, is a great reference for teaching Waldorf math and so I will also be using that. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking here like am I going to pull this now or I'm just familiarizing myself with everything. String, Straight Edge, and Shadow is a great book for teaching geometry because it really brings geometry to life because it talks about some of the mathematicians from the past and how geometry kind of came to be out of a necessity. So I definitely want to use this book. And since I've done it before, I've already marked that it's going to take three weeks to cover this by doing a chapter a day. So I'm going to put that aside and look at the games. And this game is a fractions game. And it's a very simple um, game. It it's, doesn't have very many complicated fractions. It's also pretty easy to play. And so I like to include math games in um, our, our studies, whether we're using them specifically for a unit study or just as a 
something fun that we can do daily. Equate is another really fun game similar to Scrabble only with math and I recently picked up like a junior tile set to make it a little bit easier for younger um, students to play and so I definitely want to try to incorporate that in our math unit and then one of my favorite games of all time is called Tribulation and it's a math game that's really great for um, multiplication, addition, and subtraction and so I definitely want to include that as well. So I'm already realizing that there's a lot that I want to do. <laughs> Here's another one that's going to be great for geometry. Even though it looks a little bit juvenile, these two games are going to be a fun way just to work with shapes. And this next thing is called Tree Blocks Math, which I picked up from rainbowresources.com. And we used this last year for our length and weight and measurement unit in math for my third grader. And we really liked it a lot, and I want to possibly bring this back in for our math unit this year and possibly make it um, like a review that we can do every day uh, in, alongside our new learning. And I love this because it's so organic and fits so well with the Waldorf philosophy. And so this um, kit comes with different cards for level 1, 2, and 3. And level 1 is really great for, um, say, kindergarten and preschool. And then level 2 and 3 are great for, like, say, first, second, and maybe third grade. And so we're going to be covering these um, cards as well. He's also going to be doing one page of measurement math every day just to keep those concepts fresh in his mind. And so what I decided to do was pull three cards, one from each level of the tree blocks math that he can do every day. So he will be doing three cards every day, one from each level. I also like to include some books that my kids will read or ones that I will read aloud to them. So I'm looking through some of these books that are going to be for my fourth grader and I'm deciding how long it will take him to read them and whether he will read one or two chapters a day. So I'm just making those notes on the front cover so that when I get to actually writing down all of these notes into my lesson plan, I'll, I will know how long these things will take. So I've fast forwarded this part of the video up quite a bit and these are all of the math picture books that I got recently and I'm just trying to decide how they're going to fit into our unit. And if you want to see a slower, closer look at all these books, I've included about 10 minutes at the very end of this video where I am just going through each book and I'm showing you the cover and a couple of pages inside. So I've tried to group them according to the things that I'm going to do with my fourth grader and the books that will be appropriate for geometry. I also try to look for other things that can help um, with the memorization of math facts and these audio CDs are great for the multiplication tables and for um, addition and subtraction. So now I've moved on to looking at the geometry unit and I'm going through um, the table of contents because I know that I have purchased books specifically for different topics within the curriculum and so I just want to make sure that I am including those at the appropriate time while we're doing this unit. It does take a little time to bring everything together and sort through it and so I do want to show the process as much as I can because sometimes it can seem like a mystery when it all kind of comes together. So I do like to read aloud from um, a book that relates to the unit in some way and so I'm just marking on the front cover how long I anticipate this book should take and I prefer that all my kids listen to the books that I read aloud even if the content is above them. I still find it of value for them to be there. So I think that I've pretty much figured out what I'm going to do for this unit and I'm kind of just putting everything together at this point. And this is now enough to cover a, a three to six week block. And here are some of the picture books that I'm going through now since I haven't read them in advance I might find later on that some books might have been better towards the beginning of the unit or later on in the unit. And I also am aware that these are 
quite young in nature, and this is um, for a geometry unit for my eighth grader, but I still think that when you're homeschooling with a variety of age groups, you can bring in some things that might seem too young because it appeals to the younger students that you've got and still are of value for your older student and vice versa. And so now I've just kind of put together the things that I think are going to be for this unit and I'm just trying to kind of separate them and put them aside because I do have a lot of picture books that I'm also going to include with my fourth grader. And so at this point I've decided that I can do one picture book a day to go along with the unit and so I'm just marking that on the front cover. And so this is what I've collected for the geometry unit and this is for about three to six weeks and I will show you later how, how I break it down on a daily basis. So we're using these geometry workbooks which are really simple and they don't have any math computations it's just lines and shapes and so I like them a lot. And this is where I've put all of our books for the six weeks and I have little tabs to indicate uh, where the books go for each week and this is right behind my desk in our homeschool room and I also have this little box that I put in some of the smaller manipulatives and games that we want to use for this unit and so this is just going to be an easy way to keep track of these books and these games because there are quite a few of them and this is what is inside that box and here are the math games they are also very close to uh, my desk so this is the my lesson plan uh, front and back is one week and it's in columns so it goes from top to bottom for one day and it includes um, right now a lot of math stuff because we're doing our math unit plus we have daily math that occurs um, throughout the whole year even our spelling words relate to our math unit as well and so I went ahead and I wrote up three weeks in advance and usually I don't do this I usually do about one week in advance when it comes to writing out what we're gonna do on a daily basis because sometimes things change or we might need more time with one particular lesson or we just get behind or we get we, we realize that something maybe is not needed but I went ahead and, and and did this for the purpose of the video just so you can see what it looks like when I've sorted through the, the rest of the stuff and put it together in um, my actual lesson plan because it did take a while to figure out how it was all going to work together and here are some shots that if you want to pause and look more closely at you can you can see how I actually break down the day-to-day -day for the geometry unit in particular and so at this point you could turn off the video and that would be our you know our lesson plan for um, math but if you want to stick around for another 10 minutes I will show you all of the books that we got um, related to this math unit so we got most of these books from rainbowresources.com and I will take this time right now to explain a little bit more about how Waldorf puts together um, their math curriculum and for my eighth grader for geometry in particular um, we are going to be studying um, how the shapes are formed, the relationship between the shapes, we're going to be studying the circle and the triangle and then quadrilaterals and we're also going to be studying the mathematicians of the past there's Aristophanes who measured the circumference of the earth and there's Thales and Euclid and a few more that um, their names escape me right now and so we're going to be doing some history along with our our geometry and with my fourth grader we're going to spend this time doing some uh, measurement some length um, with the tree blocks math and we're going to be doing some addition and subtraction in columns and we're going to be learning the times tables and uh, reviewing some other math facts just to keep those um, those math concepts um, very fluid and to make them very firm before we move on to fractions but at the same time we will still be doing some fractions through games and through play and through cooking and through crafting and so the way I kind of view math or really the way I view any subject is that you have the introduction to 
that subject or to that new learning and you have the actual new learning and then you have the practice or the proficiency of that learning and this can occur over the span of weeks or months or even years and so though we haven't officially started our unit on fractions my son is aware of what fractions are because we use them every day and so when we finally get to that new learning where he's actually learning how to write down the fraction and add the fraction and understand what the concept is behind a fraction he will already have some familiarity because we've already lived fractions um, so this is where I think games come in great games can be used for introducing a new math concept and I think they're excellent for review and for proficiency and when you're actually in the midst of learning something new I find that kids can either find that really thrilling and very exciting and they'll learn it very quickly but they won't want to practice what they learned they might get what fractions are or get the times table but nobody really wants to sit there and agonize over memorizing it or practicing it or doing page after page of of worksheets and so Mental math is something that we do every day, which is a great way to get your children to do any kind of math that you want them to review or be proficient at, that you can do on a daily basis, just a couple questions a day, it's all oral, and it goes very quickly. And this is something that we've been doing for many years now, and when you're only doing a couple of questions a day, like say between five and eight questions a day, you can do about a thousand questions in one year very quickly, very painlessly. And so that's another great way to bring in some of those math concepts that you either want to keep fresh in your child's mind or you might want to introduce to them. For instance, um, a lot of kids know what half a cookie is or that three cookies are more than one cookie. And so when you're doing mental math related to a concept that they haven't been formally introduced to, they can at least get familiar with the terminology. And so that's something that I've been doing with my fourth grader for at least a year where I will say something very simple that he can get intuitively what's one half plus one half and that equals one and that's easy for him to do but we haven't actually um, written that down on paper so that he can see what one half looks like one over two is what one half looks like so that's kind of hopefully not too confusing of a nutshell to explain how we go about doing um, both our daily math and our mental math and how we introduce um, a unit into that um, into that system and so I prefer to do our units in um, grammar and and writing and math at the beginning of the year when my kids tend to be a bit um, more fresh and more excited about the school year and their brains are just kind of awake and then we tend to do more of the history and the the reading during the winter months when we just feel like we want to cozy up and read a book and then in the spring we leave that for the science and the gardening and being outdoors and that's that's in general how i like to view the whole year and it's also how i like to view the day i prefer to do the heavier brain work in the morning and then when we um, break for lunch and then we come back to the schoolroom, we'll do some reading, um, of whether it's the book that I plan to read aloud to the kids every day or something that they're reading on their own. And then the afternoon, we can do more of our hands-on activities. If we're working on a project or the kids are gardening, um, we, we try to leave the afternoons for that kind of um, project. And so I'm, I'm now going to go back to the video and... and tell you that I'm probably at the tail end of looking at these um, these picture books and I I'm actually really excited about getting into these and reading them with the kids and since they're they're short and they're beautifully illustrated it's going to be quite a joy to have that as part of our our homeschool um, unit study in math every day. So I will have a complete list with all the authors names and the titles of the books. 
um, on my blog at pepperandpine.com. So if you just search under um, unit study math, then I will include um, all the books that we have and uh, where you can find them. And I will also have um, my lesson plan available for these three weeks so that you can take a look at how I have sorted through all these books and how I have um, broken it down over um, three weeks. I'll eventually have more weeks for, um, for math, but I thought that it's better if I just planned ahead for three weeks and then um, address another unit um, a little bit later because we'll do this for three weeks and we'll break and we'll do something else and then we'll come back to it again because it's a little bit long to do a whole uh, unit for six weeks straight or nine weeks straight it's a little bit more effective to take a break and then to revisit it um, a little bit later so I am just at the very end here where I'm just going to try to figure out what books are going to go where. And what I failed to mention earlier was that I was actually putting them in different um, piles um, depending on whether they were uh, for geometry or for um, just regular um, general math. 